Okay, back again with the Quan Chang UV K5 handheld. Now, I've received a lot of questions about a few things and I'm going to try and answer them in this video. Now, the first one is, is how much power does it output on the 1.25 meter band? So I'm gonna hook that up to a dummy load and to my spectrum analyzer and to do a test on that. The other question also is the programming um, software. I have been given the programming software and there will be a link in the description below. So we'll go through what the programming software looks like and how you can change some things in the radio. And just quickly too, a lot of people have asked where they can get these uh, this connector set. I'll put a link in the description. These should be in every single ham shack. They're so, so good. You basically literally just take out one end. You've got a middle bit here that you screw in and then you uh, screw another end, whichever end that you need onto the other and you can make all sorts of adapters. All right, same test jig as before. I've just got my adapter here into my spectrum analyzer. Now I am running into a dummy load. I'm not radiating anywhere. I'm going into the spectrum analyzer and we've got the radio set. Whoop. We've got the radio set on low power. So let's transmit and see what we get on low power. 0.25 watts on low power. If we go to medium, 0.27 watts. And we go to high power. Okay, so there you go. It looks like it is limited in power, actually quite severely in power on the 1.25 meter band. Quarter of a watt, 250 milliwatts. So that's a little bit limiting, um, 250 milliwatts. I actually was expecting a little bit more than that. But anyway, let's jump over to the programming software. Okay, so the first thing that you'll need is the K5 CPS software. So once you install that software, you can then go ahead and open it up and it will open up this program portable radio CPS. Now it uses just a standard Baofeng cable to get that to talk to the radio. Basically, just plug it into your computer uh, with USB. It's got the standard... Um, mic jack and speaker jack that you just plug in the side now you need to turn the radio on first before you plug this in so you plug the cable in and then it will light up blue at the top to indicate that it's um, ready for uh, programming now you'll have to go in and see what com port has been assigned to your um, particular baofeng cable uh, i think a kenwood cable programming cable also works so just go into the com setting my one's COM7, so I'll just click connect, and then I go read, and you'll see here it is now reading the um, parameters of the radio. Okay, successful. Now, I can go in here and I can go base version, so I can see here software and hardware version, so I'm assuming the hardware version is actually the firmware of the radio. Function key, this is where I can change what the two side keys do. So at the moment, the first side key uh, is monitor, the second side key is turning the flashlight on and off. Um, if you press it long, you can transmit a 1750 hertz tone. You can change all this sort of stuff, so that's pretty cool. That's um, programmable to to what's um, here. Um, recommend turning off this alarm because it's really annoying. Emergency alarm. Uh, common setting. Okay, so here we go. Single talk time, maximum length. Um, so I gather that this is the timeout timer, how long you can talk for how long the backlight stays on for, um, tail tone elimination. So all of these settings are all in here. Um, you can also change what's written on the front. So that's the first line. So I've got VK78JH. Let's go VK78JH's radio. And uh, we've got um, all of these settings are all available in the menu of the radio. So you can have a look as well in the manual which detail what most of these mean. Um, crossband transmit receiving, which it's not really crossband. Uh, it's kind of like a dual watch type of thing. Um, power on password. So the radio also does have a power on password option. So you can actually specify that here. So let's just go one, two, three, uh, one, one, two, three, four. Dear idea, don't get this wrong. One, two, three, four, five. Don't tell anyone that that's the password. To unlock my radio. Uh, DTMF. Um, oh, it must be six digits. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. DTMF settings. So these are all of your DTMF codes that you can put into the radio. Not quite sure 
what a lot of this has to do with. I think this is DTMF calling. So you can put um, individual calls towards different radios or groups of radios because it does have DTMF group calling. So you can you can specify that in there if that's what you want to use the radio for. We can go in here. Here's my stock memory channel. So there's some 2 meter and 70 centimeter memory channels in here. So let's go and change this one. I'm going to call this my local repeater, which is VK7RHT, 146-700, 146-100. High power, 25 kilohertz, um, no receiving tone and sending tone, CTCSS of 141.3 hertz. Um, don't want the busy channel lockout because I want to be able to talk over my repeater tail. Um, no PTT ID, no DTMF decoding, so I can hit OK, so that's cool. Now I can move, oh yeah, I can move the channels up and down, so that's cool. Um, I don't know if I can, can't edit from there. I need to double click. So that's pretty intuitive. It looks pretty easy. As you can see here, there's 200 memory channels. And then if I go now VFO, I can specify the different VFO ranges. This is interesting. I wonder if I can, don't think I can put, can I put a lower frequency? Does that work? Don't think that'll work. No, beyond specified range. Uh, scan list, so I can add in a list here so I can scan through all of my memory channels and add them add them in. Have a priority channel, FM radio, so I can... Oh, these are the FM radio memory channels. So let's go 100.9, uh, 101.7, 107.7, 107 and my main ones here. Um, any other settings? There's not really much more password setting. It looks like language you can change either English or Chinese. And that's pretty much it. So it looks like it's pretty intuitive, easy to understand software. It's like, you know, really easy to, to program. Looks like it's well thought out. Um, let's go now right. Okay, right, successful. And there you go, the radio has already said lock. So let's just go in to, uh, to the radio and see if we can unlock it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm unlocked, there we go. And I've got both my memory channels are in there. Um, I don't know where my names are. Don't know if I can show the name naming channel. So what I've done is I've actually just gone back and had another look and I did miss this sec, uh, setting, channel display mode. It was set on frequency. You can change it to channel name. I've just reprogrammed again and you can see now on my radio, it is showing the uh, repeater's um, channel name or the, uh, in this case, the call sign of the repeater that I put in. Oh, look, just briefly it showed there. VK7HH's radio. These things have been coming and going in and out of stock on Amazon. There is a link in the description below that I have been updating for you. So if you can't get one straight away, then just wait a little while and I'll see if I can update the link. Let me know though if it does go out of stock in the comments. If you've purchased one of these radios, let me know in the comments below if you've received it, what you think of it. Any more questions about the radio, then please leave a comment below. If you haven't seen my other videos on the Quantian Radio, then there will be some links over here for you to check out.